Jackson's going to move the machine, the Y, in the positive direction, and I'm going to hit the switch. guys well as you can see we've got the gen 2 table out today and we're getting back on this table and we're doing an add-on that a lot of you guys have asked for we're adding limit switches to the gen 2 table today uh, make sure you stick around to the end of the video and we'll explain why we decided to finally add the limit switches to the so we've got our micro switches the micro switches we spec out come with a long arm on it we've just taken a second and and clipped these off with a good side cutter so clip them off flush with the end of the Micro switch body. Now we're ready to mount the first one. So we're gonna mount the first limit switch here on the uh, negative side of the Y axis. So we're gonna bring this Y all the way back till the bottom's out. We're gonna move it forward an eighth or so of an inch, eighth to a quarter, push this up tight. In this case, we're gonna index off the bearing. So I'm gonna push it up against the bearing. I'm gonna take my transfer punch and I'm gonna go ahead and punch the first one. Center punch, gonna move it back up, tight there. Remove my transfer punch. Go ahead and punch the second one. Should have two center punched holes. One there, one there. Move this out of the way and we'll uh, drill and tap for this micro switch. You notice we won, we put the terminals on the inside, we're gonna run the wires over here, keep them out of the way. We've got the minus side on the Y done, we're gonna go ahead and get the positive side on the uh, Y done as well, bring it to the end, bottom it out, move it back a eighth to a quarter, push our micro switch all the way up, we're gonna hit on the bearing, yeah, terminal to the inside and we're gonna hit the center punch. On the x-axis this one's getting a little tricky it's kind of a might be more of a two-person deal here i'll hold the switch and we can't we'll see if jackson can't get the center punch done but um we're gonna bring this all the way over till it bottoms out gonna back it up a little bit push the switch on and then we're gonna see how about there gonna see if jackson can't get a center punch in there Probably drill one hole here, get it on and center punch the other one. <laughs> Unfortunately, in order to get the second screw in, we had to pop the X gantry tube off. We'll have to reattach it and re-square it when we're done, but we'll get this uh, center punched and, and then we'll um, get that tapped and drilled and tapped and away we'll go. the outboard section of the X and bring it to the end um, push this in a little bit activate the switch move it to the center and we're gonna use two hands again and have Jackson hit it So this is the Z-axis, and for the Z-axis, we currently have the probe switch. The probe switch is gonna remain, but we have to add a second switch in there 
for the upper limit. And so what we've done is we 3D printed a bracket. It's gonna sit behind this switch and the second switch is gonna to mount to it and then it'll actuate, it'll actuate up in this area. Um, this bracket is 3D printed. We 3D printed it in the file, in the plans, there'll be the file to either 3D print this or we'll have the DXF file where you can cut it out and make it out of steel. It doesn't matter how you make it. Uh, for us, it was just easier to 3D print. So I went ahead and attached the micro switch to the uh, adapter plate and we screwed it in. You gotta make sure your bolts are flush in the back or it can get in here and cause issues. Um, and then we drilled these out so that the, these bolts pass through. We unbolted that and we'll get that in here. So these will just push through. Okay, now that we've got that in, depending upon how your setup works, you may have to add a little bigger washer under your bolt that puts on your Z motor. So just so the lever hits, get some good action there. We probably didn't need it, but it's a little safety thing. So right here I'm building the cables for the limit switch that go inside the box. And as you can see, I'm just stripping the insulation off and I'm gonna end up using the braided shield wire as the drain wire. So one thing to note when soldering these cables to the aviation connectors is you're going to want to tin the cables first. So basically I'm just going to put a little bit of solder and melt it onto the cable. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the connector end. You're going to want to make sure your solder is nice and hot so that it flows real nice. Okay, now that I've got all of the cables made, I'm just gonna go ahead and install them to the opto isolator bank inside the control box. Now that I've got the all the internal cables built, I'm going to start building the external cables. So the process is pretty much going to be the same thing except for I'm going to do it with stripping back way less insulation. Then I'm going to have to put the uh, strain relief part of the connector onto the cable as well as the piece of heat shrink before I connect it or before I solder the wires onto the actual connector. The way that we write, like to route the cables is we put on the first connector and then we plug it into the electrical box where it's going to go. And then in this case, this cable is going to route down uh, underneath along the Y motor cable. So we're going to get it tie wrapped into place along the Y motor cable. So now that this wire comes out of the Y, or excuse me, the X uh, tube, and it's gotta go to the micro switch here, we're just gonna cut it to length off of the thing and crimp out a couple of spade connectors. And we're gonna go ahead and hook these up. We're gonna put the red on common. 
and the black's going to go to normally open. Normally open. Well, we've got the switches mounted. We've got all the wiring ran. We're gonna test the switches to make sure they're reacting properly with the controller. So we'll start out with the um, Y minimum. We'll go to the Y positive. We'll go to the probe. Then we'll go to the Z positive. And then we'll go to the Y, or excuse me, the X min. And then Jackson, if you can reach the X positive. There we go, it looks like they're all reacting properly. Now that it appears that the switches are working properly uh, with the controller, we've turned on the hard limits and now we're gonna make sure that the uh, switches actually stop the machine. So Jackson's gonna move the machine, the Y in the positive direction and I'm gonna hit the switch. Looks like it's stopping. Y in the minimum direction. Like it's working good. We'll go X in the minimum direction. Z in the, well, we'll just test the Z. Just take it all the way up, Jackson. Yep, looks like it's working. And then if you want to test the X in the positive. Looks like they're all working properly. So now that everything's functioning properly, we're gonna go ahead and home the machine. It's gonna home the Z, then the X and the Y fast, and then it'll rehome a second time slow to make sure that it gets an accurate, uh, absolute home position. Now that we're home, we're ready to start the next cutting job. Now that the machine's home and we got the metal on, we're gonna move it over to establish our zero point. We usually go to the very corner of the metal. Looks like we're pretty close right there, so we'll establish zero in open builds and get ready to run the job. So we're going to cut out some caster plates for the bottom of the legs on the XL table. It's getting pretty heavy to move around back and forth for Jackson and I, especially if we leave the water in it. So we're gonna get some caster plates cut out on the Gen 2 machine for the XL. Well, there you have it guys, the Gen 2 table. Now, uh, we cut these out without the uh, THC on it. Our THC is currently mounted on our XL machine. So we, don't, we only use one out in the shop. I'm struggling. There's a the parts coming off the Gen 2 machine, no THC, nice cuts. 
Well, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video, guys. Now, I'd like to report that we've had a few customers send us information about their machines pausing during long cutting jobs. That we've also had some reports from customers of having very difficulty getting the interference out of the probe switch cable. So the best way to solve both those issues was to add an opto isolator bank and power that from its own power supply. So that's what we've done and to, to get rid of that. Now we've had several customers test this out and they reported that the problems went away 100%. So that's why we're adding it to the plan package and it was very easy to add the limit switches to that opto bank since it was already installed. So with that, we appreciate you sticking around to the end. Make sure to like and subscribe.